Sitting before you is the great polynomial inequality. And you've dealt with these previously where there's an equal sign in here. And if there is an equal sign in there, you'll only you just have to worry about what values of x you could plug in to get a zero over here. Well now you're not worried about that. You're actually worried about what values you can plug in for x such that this whole thing over here turns into a number that's less than or equal to zero. We can find the equal to zero part pretty easily. Remember that if it's in factored form, it's really easy to find this. You just set each factor equal to zero. It'll tell you what the values are that give you zero. So remember how you do this. You just say, well, x must be 3. That's the value that you could plug in for x, and you'll get a 0. For instance, if you plug a 3 in here, 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 times anything, because that's what's going on here, it's multiplication. 0 times anything is 0. So x equals 3 is going to be one of your, uh, will be part of your answer for this in this scenario. Do the same thing here. And we'll take that factor and set it equal to 0 x equals negative 4. That's a value that if you plug it in for x, specifically right here, you'll get 0. And 0 times anything is 0. So this is going to be part of your answer. we we'll take this guy over here, set him equal to 0, and I'm going to move the x over, make it a little bit easier on myself. x equals 1. If I plug a 1 in right here, I'll get 0. And 0 times anything is going to be 0. So if there had been an equal sign here, you're done. You get three answers and you're done. But it's not not quite that easy on these questions. The idea here is what happens if you plug in another number besides 3? Are you going to 3, say you pick a number 2. If you plug a 2 in here and a 2 in here and a 2 in here, is that going to give you a number that's less than 0 or bigger than 0? There's only two ways it could be, right? A number less than 0 is negative. A number bigger than 0 is positive. So there's, there's two ways you can do this. Uh, first way is what I like to call test points. All right, called test points. So what you do is you take the number line, you take all the numbers, negative infinity to infinity, and you split it up. You split it up using these numbers. Some people call them the critical values. I call them the zeros because those are the numbers you plug in to get zero. But you take these numbers, see negative four would be first, and then the one, and then the three. I'm gonna split up the number line into intervals using these numbers. See what's going to happen is that you plug a negative 4 in here, you'll get 0. Well a number past negative 4 like negative 3 or behind negative 4 like negative 5, if you plug a negative 5 in and you throw it in there, you're actually going to get a positive answer over here. If you plug in a negative 3, you'll get a negative answer. And I'll show you why that happens. So I'm going to split up this whole number line into intervals using the zeros using those numbers that we found a second ago. So I get this interval from negative infinity to negative 4. I'm going to use parentheses to close this up. No, I'm going to use square brackets. Oh, that was almost that was almost horrendous. I better just white that out and put a square bracket so I don't confuse anyone, right? Let's see if I can't white out that, uh, that parentheses. That's, oh man. Right, you gotta, you got to use a square bracket because it's an equal to. All right, so square bracket. Square bracket from negative 4 to 1, square bracket 1 to 3, square bracket 3 to infinity. And I've come up with four intervals. Four intervals. Now, if I pick any number in this interval and plug it in for x, I'm going to get a value, but more importantly, I want to know if that value is going to be positive or negative. So let's use negative 5. Let's test negative 5. That's in this interval, right? Negative 6 negative 7, negative 8, all those numbers are in this one interval. Let's test that. So if I test that one interval using negative 5, that'd be negative 8, and then negative 5 and 4 make negative 1. Remember what happens when two negatives together make a plus, so that'd be 6. That'd be a positive 8 times 6. That's a 48. Less than or equal to, to 0. That's not true, right? 48 is not less than 0. It's not true. Well, I picked negative 5 and got 48, but you know what? I could have picked negative 6. 
or negative 7, or negative 8, or negative 9, or negative 10, right? Anything that's to the left of negative 4, any number you pick, you're going to get this scenario where there's going to be a positive number on the left, and, a, and that's, ne that's never going to be less than 0. So this interval is not going to contain any numbers that work in this polynomial inequality. All right, so this, this guy is out of the question. Let's pick a number within this interval. A good number within, the, within this interval, I like to use 0. 0 is easy to work with. So let's plug a 0 in for x. That'd be negative 3, 4, and 1. Negative 12 times 1, which is negative 12. Hey, looky there. That's true. True. So that means that any number I pick, not just 0, but any number I pick within this interval would work in this inequality. I would get a negative number on the left. So we're going to use that answer. This, this is going to be part of our answer. Let's check this interval. Let's see, 2 would be a good number to pick. I'm not going to pick 1 or 3 because I know what happens when I pick 1 or 3. I get 0. Right? That doesn't help us any. We want numbers in between here. So let's use another piece of paper. And let's check out what happens if I use 2. So 2 minus 3, 2 plus 4, 1 minus 2. Right, I'm going to plug a 2 in everywhere I see an x. Is this true? Negative 1 times 6 times negative 1. That's negative 6 times a negative. That's positive 6. Dang, that's not true. So, this interval, any number I pick in this interval will not work. So that is not part of our answer. Let's try this interval right here. What would be a good number to pick there? I'm just going to use 4, I guess. I will plug a 4 in. Let's plug a 4 in up here. Okay, we're seeing x, I put a 4. That'd be, neg that'd be a positive 1. And then 8, negative 3. That'd be 8 times negative 3 which is negative 24. That's true. True, 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 true. So, this is part of our answer then. This, these two intervals, if I pick a number in this interval and a number in this interval, or a number in this interval, and plug it in for x, it'll give me a true inequality. So, my answer here would be, so here's my answer box, negative 4, comma 1, union, 3 infinity. All right. All right, let's try another one. So here, you're given 2x squared less than 7x plus 4, and you want to solve this polynomial inequality. Now, if I want to solve this, i got to have the right side be a 0. Some people put the 0 over here. I like having it on the right side. So I'm going to move this stuff over. Alright, now I need to find the x-intercepts of this. So remember what you do to find the x-intercepts are those zeros, those critical values that we found from before. Right, you're solving for that. There's two ways to do it. You can factor it. This would actually factor. That would factor into that. Or you can use the quadratic formula. see if we can do this real quick.
So I get those two values if I use the quadratic formula. Over here, if I set these equal to zero, it's a little bit less work, but I get the same two values. Okay, so remember what I did in the second ago? I made up a number line and I come up with some intervals. So my intervals would be negative infinity to negative one half. And I'm going to use parentheses this time because it's a simple less than. So I'm still using all the numbers. It's just I split everything up. So now we're going to pick numbers out of these intervals and test them. So I'm going to test negative one here. So I'm going to test negative one. So let's test negative one. I like to go back to the original and just try it. And that is not true. Nope. So this interval doesn't work. Test uh, getting test point on this interval. Uh, zero is in there, so I'm gonna try zero. So let's try zero. Two times zero, which is zero. Zero plus four is four. Hey, that's true. Zero is less than four. True. So, if that is true, then that means that this is going to be part of our answer, right? This is going to be part of our answer. Let's try something out of here, like five. Five is a good test point out for this one. So let's stick a five in here. So let's plug a 5 in here. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. 50 is not less than 39. So this is not part of our answer, right? This guy here is not part of our answer. This is the only guy left. This is our solution set. Negative 1 half comma four and you're both in parentheses so this is what you put in your answer box now there is another way of doing this and if you want to look at the graphical way of doing it just click on the link and I'll take you to the way to do these questions graphically same two questions but graphically if, if this makes sense you can do this by all means with any question you want but you can check out the graph method and maybe it seems a little easier to you I don't know